slightly different video than you are probably used to, but I do hope that this is beneficial for a lot of you in a completely different way. As you are watching this now, you know me as Zoe, I write a blog, um, and I'm on my Twitter a lot, and I like all things materialistic. But what you don't often see is a different side of me which I will begin to explain in this video. That kind of makes it sound like I have some scary alter ego and that at night I turn into a werewolf, or I am in fact a vampire or something really weird, but it's not of that nature, although that would be very cool. And it is a very personal video for me to sit down and talk to you about. I've never really addressed this issue in front of hundreds of thousands of people, but I'm going to pretend there are not hundreds of thousands of people watching right now. If this helps at least one of you watching this, just one of you, then it's totally worth it and I'm 100% happy that I've managed to help. A lot of people get the assumption that because someone is able to sit here in front of a camera and speak for 10 to 20 minutes and broadcast it in front of hundreds and thousands, potentially millions of people on the internet, that must mean that they are 100% confident, have absolutely no self-esteem issues, have no real life problems, they're always happy, they're always jolly. That is so wrong. There are a lot more things to people than you might first realise. And what a lot of you may not know is that I have suffered with anxiety and panic attacks really, really badly since I was 14, making that a grand total of nine years almost. A while ago, if any of you read my blog, um, I did a whole uh, write-up about panic attacks and all the information around that, but I figured that I wanted to make a video because that blog post helped so many of you. I still get emails daily from people saying, um, I'm so glad I'm not the only person that has this, thank you so much. And it just made me think, although it's going to be absolutely terrifying to sit and talk about it out of my mouth rather than just typing, if my blog post helped people, then maybe if I did a video it might help people too. So. I am going to sit here, regardless of the fact it makes me feel extremely uncomfortable and it's not something I really enjoy discussing with hundreds and thousands of people, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> if you are now sat here wondering what a panic attack is or what anxiety is, I will try and explain it the best way I can. Um, I did explain it in a lot more detail and probably a lot more thoroughly on my blog, but I will try my best. I don't know exactly what triggered my panic attacks. Um, although I have a rough idea that it may have had something to do with being at a party, um, being surrounded by a lot of drunk people. I didn't like being in the space. I wanted to get away and I just had a full-on panic attack. That was the first panic attack I'd ever had. It lasted from 11pm at night until 5am in the morning in bursts. The thing with panic attacks is that they happen within 5 to 25 minutes. I think 25 minutes is literally the maximum amount of time that you can ever panic for, like full on panic. Um, and I was having bursts of panic all around the clock until 5am when I rang my dad and I made him come and get me. <laughs> so I'm going to talk a little bit about the symptoms, what happens to you, and if this sounds like something that might be happening to you as well, then I hope this can kind of reaffirm things in your head and maybe help you as well. So the first thing that happens when you panic, uh, you don't really ever know what you're panicking for. You don't always choose what makes you panic. Your sympathetic nervous system um, kicks in, so it's basically called the fight or flight. The best way of me describing this to you is your body sets itself up to either run away or to fight the problem. I think it kind of dates back to like caveman days where a wild boar would approach a caveman and he would think I can either run away or I can fight the wild boar. Um, so okay, you're not going to be addressed with wild boars in this day and age, but if your body thinks it's in any kind of danger, regardless of whether you are or not, it will kick in. A lot of people who suffer with anxiety and panic attack just have a much weaker sympathetic nervous system. I was told that you're almost like the car in the street whose car alarm goes off from a little gust of wind, unlike all the other cars in the street whose car alarms will only ever go off when someone's smashing the window. Once your sympathetic nervous system has kicked in, it sets things off like adrenaline, um, adrenaline will be released around your body. Because of the adrenaline, you will sweat, 
but you'll be cold, I get hot shivers. Um, other things that happen are you lose feeling in your hands and your feet, um, you feel very claustrophobic. When I panic, I have to get out of any situation that I'm in. Um, I don't like people around me, you feel smothered. Um, sounds and smells become heightened. Everything's louder, everything's busier, everything smells really bad. All your senses are like, this is horrible. <laughs> I also feel very, very sick when I panic, and this is because your digestive system shuts down, making you feel sick because things are not working as they're supposed to be working in your stomach, and it can make your throat feel dry, it can make you heave, your heart's beating really fast, some people think they're going to have a heart attack, you feel as though there's no air, you can hyperventilate because you're breathing funny, all these things building up and up and up, and you can't cope basically, and that is a panic attack. Panic attacks are really not very nice. I wouldn't even wish one on my worst enemy, and I don't really have any enemies to wish them on, but I wouldn't because it's not a nice feeling, and it is something that prevents you being able to do the things you really want to do, which is the overall really horrible thing about it. Then it results in you feeling depressed, you feel like you're not normal, I used to just get so upset after every single panic attack you just feel like absolute crap, you feel drained mentally, you feel drained physically because your heart's been beating so fast, you literally feel like you've run a marathon, but then you have to kind of deal with the fact that this is probably going to happen again and this is going to stop me from doing the things that I really want to do, which is the worst part of it. I not only had panic attacks, but I had panic disorder, which is where you stop doing things in case you think you're going to have a panic attack. So some people may just have one panic attack and think that was a bit odd, didn't really like that, but carry on as normal and maybe never have a panic attack ever again. Whereas I was the sort of person that would have a panic attack and think, oh my gosh, that was really horrible, now I'm terrified of doing that and I won't do it. The reason for people having panic attacks in situations where they've been before is because the brain stores away the information um, as a dangerous situation. So if you walk into a nightclub and you have a panic attack and you freak out, the next time you walk into a nightclub it's very likely that the same thing is going to happen because your brain triggers the same uh, reaction. It's very clever. The brain is very, very clever. It's also kind of annoying at times. So it will store away the information and that's why a lot of people will have panic attacks in the same place. For a while I would always have a panic attack in Paddington train station because every time I got there the same trigger was set off in my brain that made me think I was in danger when in actual fact I wasn't and it was almost expected, and um, because you expect it, it's worse, and that's why it's a vicious circle. I used to get them really, really badly. Um, there was a stage in my life very recently, I went through a really hard time, and my panic attacks were really bad, almost to the point where I didn't even want to get out of bed. I wouldn't go on the trains, I wouldn't go to meetings in London, I wouldn't go see friends, I wouldn't, I would never eat out in a restaurant because I was worried that I'd panic um, and I wouldn't be able to get out, I wouldn't ever go clubbing, no way, that would be completely off the cards. It even got to the point where I didn't want to drive, which is really not good and there are so many, so many different places where I would just panic for no reason. Trains, the tube, in taxis, I used to refuse to get in taxis, on buses, coaches, any kind of form of public transport I wouldn't get on. Waiting for things, um, that seems kind of odd, but if you're watching this and you have panic attacks you'll know exactly what I mean. You know you have to wait and it starts making you anxious. Places where you feel like you can't leave, like hairdressers for example, um, and waiting for doctor's appointments, like sat in the waiting room. I used to have them at school, in sixth form. I'd have them at family parties where there'd be like seven of us. I would sometimes even have them lying in bed at night, just for no reason. Work dues, I'd be like, no, sorry, I don't really want to go, and it just makes you appear rude, and you're thinking, please don't hate me, it's not something that I really want, it's not something I enjoy, and I would much rather be completely normal, and be able to go and eat out in a restaurant, and not care that I might have a panic attack and have to leave. I missed out on a lot of things that I would have normally been doing as a young adult. There was just one period in my life where I was just like, no, I'm not doing anything, I'm not doing anything. And I think that was like the most depressing for like other people around me. I know that Louise was like, I don't like this, you're not happy anymore. It was almost like 
the Zoe that you see now and the Zoe that people know was not there. I refused to go anywhere, I refused to do anything. And that's a sad existence, like who wants to live like that? I've had them for nine years. I didn't do anything about my panic attacks until last year when I decided that enough was enough and now that I knew what was happening and it was ruining the way I was living my life, I decided to go to a doctor and speak to her. I just went to my local GP. They were really unhelpful. Um, it's kind of disheartening after so long. You go to the doctors and you just think, okay, they're gonna sort me out, it'll be fine. And it made me feel really crap and after that I guess I just felt worse because then I felt like well maybe there isn't something wrong with me and maybe I just need to deal with this on my own and the doctors can't give me anything right there are so many different things that you can do to solve panic attacks there's um, pills you can take for anxiety there are um, beta blockers things to slow down your heart I didn't really want to go straight into the medical route because that kind of terrifies me but I went there, I had got nothing from it and then we started looking at like private places to go, it's all very expensive and we were looking at hypnotherapy, we were looking at lots and lots of different things and I tried things from like boots and super drug, you know, the calming things, none of that stuff really worked. Then a couple of months ago uh, I went through a really horrible time and it's not something that I like to ever think over too much. Over the last few months I decided to take a completely different outlook on life. I just sat here one day and I was like, this is not what I want to be like. A few months ago, I, I wasn't even, I was barely doing anything. I was just like, <sighs> having a poopy time. I was in a really poopy mood and I just, one day I was just like, no, I don't want to do, I don't want to be like this anymore. You can't let panic or anxiety change the way you do things because you get one life YOLO you only live once <laughs> yes I just said YOLO this is what I was thinking I was just like I'm never gonna be this age again I'm never gonna have this day again I'm never going to get back the years that I wasted being too terrified to ever leave my house or to miss out on all the memories that my friends are making while I'm sat here because I'm too scared I'm gonna panic Panic attacks will not kill you. It is extremely rare it will ever cause you to drop down dead. It's just your body's way of trying to protect you and that's the way that you have to kind of see it. You just have to think to yourself, really, what is the worst that can happen? You can't die. You're not going to cause the death of anybody else. There is nothing that can happen to you that is terrible and this is the one thing you have to remind yourself. Like, don't set yourself time limits on anything. If you're an anxious person or you suffer with panic attacks, the best advice I can give you is never try and stick to a timed schedule for anything. It just maximises stress so much. If you think to yourself, yeah, okay, I'm going to meet my friend, but I'm going to do it when I want to do it and it doesn't matter if it takes me all day and it doesn't matter if I have to get off the train six times before I get there just do everything the way you want to do it at your own pace it is a mental illness and nobody likes to use the word mental illness but it is and it's not something that people choose to have I didn't I didn't choose when I was 14 to decide to have panic attacks for nine years and for it to ruin loads of opportunities for me but that's just what happened and you can either let it rule your life and let it make you miserable or you can just think no I don't want to live my life like that anymore you can either go and seek help professionally if you've not already or just think the same thing as me after I decided enough is enough and I'm not gonna live like this anymore I decided to say yes to things I would not normally say yes to and it involved me making loads of new friends, um, going places I'd never been before. Just every opportunity that came at me in the last few months, I said yes to. If you decide to take the opportunities that you're given, you will get more out of life. There are so many people that suffer with anxiety, depression, um, panic attacks, the, the list is endless and a lot of the time they're all connected somehow. One in four people will suffer with 
some form of mental illness. So I guess the point of this video is to let you guys know that you are not the only person that feels this way. If you're watching this and you've not left your house in like two months, please just remember that you will never get these two months back if you continue to let the anxiety and the panic take over your life because that's exactly what it's doing. You literally need to bat it out, give it a punch, throw it away, karate chop it, whatever you want to do, just get rid of it. Some of you may think that's just, that's terrifying, there's no way I could ever contemplate just thinking of saying yes to any of the things that I'm terrified of. But if you do it slowly, like just do it how you're most comfortable doing it. You can either build up to the big scary things that you're scared of or just go out and do it. A hundred percent, I promise you, once you've done it and you've not panicked, you feel so much better and it builds your confidence and you just feel so much better about yourself and the more you're building your confidence, the more you think, I can do it. If you're watching this and you know somebody that panics and you know someone that has anxiety but you don't suffer with it yourself, there are a few things I can advise to you if you don't know what to do or you don't know what to say or you don't know how to help. One of the main things is, please research it, because there's nothing worse than being with somebody that doesn't get it and that doesn't want to know. 110% it will make them feel so much worse, like so, so much worse. One of my biggest, biggest advice to you is if you're standing with someone and they're having a panic attack, whether you know them or not, whether you can sympathise or not, please just stay quiet until they ask something of you. They're panicking and they don't need you to panic as well and if they want something from you they will ask you. That's that's what I like anyway, I don't know if everyone's the same, maybe some people do like being distracted but I think it's just better to make it where you're there and to let them know that you're not going anywhere and that there's no pressure to be anywhere and if they say I want you to find me some ice, you run and find ice and if they say I want you to make me a chair then you make a chair, maybe not that extreme. Okay, so I'm coming to the end of my video now. I'm sorry I've rambled on for so long. I do hope this has helped some of you. And I guess the reason that I'm doing this is to just say, please don't let anything control your life. Be that a person, um, if there's a person in your life that's affecting your um, like mental health or they're not helping the situation, be that your actual anxieties, be that things that you worry about every day, your panic attacks, your depression, anything, don't let it control you. And I know that is easy for me to say, but after suffering with it for nine years and now being able to do things that I wish that I had done on my own without any help, then I know that maybe some of you watching this may feel exactly the same way after this video is finished. If you can switch off the negative thoughts surrounding any of those things, even if it's just for one day, then eventually you will start to grow confidence and your fears and anxieties and worry will soon fade and you'll just be able to do all the things that you really want to do. I try and look at it as in, think of all the amazing things you could be doing or all the amazing things you could be missing out on and you don't want to have to live your life thinking, what if I'd have gone to uni? Like, what if I had gone travelling around the world? What if I had just said yes to that guy that asked me out on a date but I said no because I was too scared? There are so many things that you could literally sit here and be like, what if? And you don't want to live your life thinking, what if? There is a lot more to people than you might first realise and sometimes life is hard for people and I just hope that this video has either comforted you in the knowledge that someone else is going through the same thing or has even helped you realise what you're experiencing is panic or if it's helped you to help someone else or if it's in fact helped you to stop panicking that would be absolutely amazing um, but please uh, leave comments in the comment section below and reply to each other's comments this is a good opportunity for people to write things out and for other people to reply and for people to get involved with each other and help each other please just at least try and say yes to one thing after watching this video if not everything and yeah let me know i will also leave the links to my blog posts below so you can go and read those and that's it so i'm sorry this was really deep but i love you guys and thank you so much for watching my videos and for sticking with me so yeah um have a nice rest of the day and bye